Good morning all. I've completed the assembly of the minimalist version of Analog EVSE. Now that's a project by Bernhard Walter. I'm going to put a link to it down in the description below. You can go and have a look at that. This is a cut down version of it, which I'm hoping will do just the essential uh, functions that will turn this into an electric vehicle, not charger exactly, but an electric vehicle supply equipment. So let's get straight into powering this up. So I've got my battery, uh, 12 volt battery here. Let's put positive on there and negative on here. And one of the things I wanna know on initial power up is, is there a little relay clack? In other words, do the relays briefly pull in, which could briefly put mains on a connector, which you could potentially have your fingers in. It'd be pretty dumb to put your fingers in it, but do they clack? Let's find out. No. Nothing at all. So the relays remain uh, open when you put 12 volts onto this circuit. Right, let's take a look with the scope at some points. So in the previous video, I had the square wave generator working, generating a one kilohertz square wave. Let's take a look at that. I'll press auto on the scope. Uh, there it is, the trigger is in the middle. Oh, it's slightly lopsided now because it's driving through a 2K2 resistor, a 100N cap. So yes, there's a little bit of rise time and a little bit of fall time. Let's look at the top end of that cap, which is there. And now we can see, and I can probably take that up, um, this triangle wave. Now, of course, it's not a precise triangle wave. It has a, ri a capacitor style rise and a capacitor style fall. But the point is, if you put that into a comparator, against a fixed voltage and you move that voltage up and down you will widen and narrow the resulting pulse uh, can we take a look at that that be the output of the first comparator won't it and that is here there um, I think I'll have to bring the well I'll just press auto again so that is um, the comparator uh, a triangle wave and we've got a narrow pulse now the question is well the frequency is one kilohertz but the question is what is the width of that pulse well it's two divisions where they're 50 microseconds slightly more possibly so it's about a hundred microseconds so we've got 100 microseconds of on time and 900 microseconds of off time that makes uh, one millisecond, which is the equivalent of one kilohertz. It's the period version of the one kilohertz frequency. So let's now, now move on to the actual CP signal itself, which is down here. In fact, I'll just poke it in that hole there. And uh, there we've got, with a 23.7 volt swing, um, our 10% pulse width. Now, 10% corresponds to a 6 amp charge, which is about, I think, 1300 and something watts at 230 volts. Now, the voltage, which is the top of this waveform, is measured with the peak follower, and that gives you a static DC voltage. I mean, there's a slight movement on it. Oh, <laughs> I triggered something there. Um, but that's measuring oh, just over 10 volts, I think because there are two diode drops, one in the emitter follower and one in this 4148. I think I said it was going to be something like 10.8 volts. Well, it's not far short of that. And then that um, peak voltage is fed through to the comparators and depending on what that voltage is. Now, if that voltage is between 7.5 volts and 1.5 volts, these relays should turn on. But the only way we're going to get that to happen is if I put a resistor, which is what the car does, across this output. Now I'm going to put a 1K resistor because that creates a potential divider. The 1K resistor that's on the back end of the uh, line driver and this 1K resistor should bring the CP line or the top of it down to 6 volts and that should turn the relays on. So let's look at the CP pulse. There it is. We'll bring it down to 6 volts and the relays turn on. <laughs> I can get a good connection on my 1K resistor. 
Now you'll notice that it comes down, both the top comes down and the bottom pulls up. If we put a resistor with a diode in series with it, that won't happen. In fact, why don't I make one? So in the electric vehicle is actually this, it's a diode and a resistor. Um, and when the car wants to uh, pull some charge, it brings the resistor down to 800 ohms or something like that. Well, this is 1K, it's quite close. So let's put that and look at the waveform. And if we put that on there, uh, that's the wrong way around, isn't it? Because that's pulling the bottom up, but not bringing the top down. Oh, of course, CP's down here, isn't it? Yeah, protective earth is the top point. So that brings down the top of the waveform, but doesn't bring the bottom up. But since we're only looking at the top of the waveform uh, for our comparator measurements, that is sufficient to pull the relays in. Now, if we put a resistance across here, which might be like someone putting their fingers across the exposed pins of the connector, um, we should see, of course, that the reduction in waveform height will be symmetrical. And if I had the additional comparators in this circuit, the relays shouldn't actually respond to this. They should reject that as an error and only close the relays if the top comes down, but the bottom doesn't go up. But I haven't built that circuitry, so it works in both instances with just the resistor or the resistor and the diode. So let's just go through this schematic and cross out what I didn't build. Well, I didn't build that. I didn't build that or that or that or that. So yes, only three comparators. These two, which uh, are a window comparator, and this one, which um, cuts this triangle wave down into a narrow pulse width square wave and I linked across there joining the line driver for control pilot directly to the output of this comparator so that's what I built uh, quite a simplified version really now I must admit um, when I first looked at this schematic I couldn't quite work out what this capacitor was doing it's in this resistor divider chain which provides these uh, voltage references for the comparators but it's a very large value, one microfarad. And I thought that's a bit excessive just to stabilize this voltage. And also why aren't there stabilizing caps on the other voltages? But I don't think that's what this does. I think what this is, is a power on slow rise capacitor. So I think the idea is that VCON comes up slowly and that could alleviate a possible problem where when this 100N charges up uh, as this 12 volts comes up when you first power on you will take the voltage on the top of this capacitor through the comparator's window and you will very briefly energize the relays but i've since looked at this the time constant of this 100n with a 1k driver is something like 100 microseconds uh, the time constant of the relay well we can look at the data sheet for that um, it's got a 20 milliseconds uh, operate time and a 10 milliseconds dropout time. So with 100 microseconds and 20 milliseconds, we're 200 times too quick for the relay to pull in briefly when this thing powers up. So I haven't got a problem with it uh, clattering the relay and briefly putting mains on the output pins when it powers up. So I'm not going to worry about that capacitor. So other things I've been doing, I cut this, uh, which was a six way connector block. CPC didn't have any four ways. I cut two ways off by pulling these uh, connections out and just hacksawing the end off. So I can now stick that in there. So I might as well do that right now. I think I'll change bits for this. I'll use this uh, large bit with a big fat chisel. Is that a chisel or a wedge? One of those two on the end. Uh, right, let's get that one warmed up. We'll get it nice and hot. Yeah, that's smoking away nicely. Uh, so let's raise that up to 400 and try to attach this thing. Oh yeah, that's soldering in quite nicely. Now let's do the far end first. And there's a good surface area match to the iron 
So that's working really quite well. That's done. Now to vary the pulse width and therefore the current at which the car will charge, um, you need to vary this resistor here. So there's a 10k pull up to 12 volts, there's a 56k pull down, so there's a potential divider, there's a little stabilizing cap there, this is ground. And um, Bernhard has put this, he said for fixed current install RV1, I think actually that's wrong, I think it means for variable current install RV1 and omit this fixed resistor, also put the connector on. Um, for fixed current you don't have the pot, you have this resistor and then you can add additional resistors on this uh, external point. Now I haven't implemented any of that, my resistor's just buried in there somehow. Um, but he's handily given this table and for 6 amps there's no additional resistor across uh, that 56k. So I've just put the 56k in and we do appear to have approximately a 10% mark space ratio. So um, if this thing has 12 volts on it and it will, uh, once I put this mains to 12 volt power supply in the board and the fuse and this connector and put mains on there. Um, it will, given the correct resistance on the output, and the car will do that of course, turn the relays on and let that mains transfer to the car and at the same time put out this 10% uh, 24 volt swing either side of protective earth, uh, 1 kilohertz square wave which the car should accept as an instruction to just pull 6 amps and I I've preset this to 6 amps and it probably won't change from that uh, because I just want to charge the car at its minimum charge current so that I don't stress oh I've got to be careful flipping these over I don't stress uh, these live and neutral tracks too much I, I still need to put um, tinned copper wire along here and solder it down so that we've got a nice high current uh, mains transfer area now the um, Capacitors here which sit across the relay coils, a couple of people were saying it's uh, they're not going to do much and um, the idea was they'd stop relay chatter but I think what I'm going to do is put some LEDs in these holes so that we can see the relays coming on. These are those bright green ones but I don't want to pull too much current from this power supply so I'm going for 2k4 as my resistor just because I happen to find some. And yeah that's interesting, I don't know whether you're going to see this but if I glitch the power those LEDs do briefly come on because there is a very brief traversal through the uh, window comparators on stage as this circuit powers up um, but it's not long enough to pull the relays in so I'm not too concerned about it. Now if we put the resistor across CP and protective earth these two LEDs light up they're pointing in different directions but there they are so now you can see the relays coming on okay that's a good addition uh, I've just been out to the shed and got this reel of very fat 18 swug uh, standard wire gauge not sure what that is in AWG American wire gauge but whatever so I'll cut some pieces of this lay it down on these tracks and then flood solder in just to beef them up a bit they are on the top and on the bottom but um, they're one ounce copper so yeah let's beef these up. I can do these two now I'll have to make the second connector in order to do these ones. Right now I've got to cut this six-way connector down to a three-way connector to put there for the mains input so let's start levering these things out. I'll take three of these out and then um, I'll saw this off with a little hacksaw. Right, that's my three pin connector cut to size. So I'll just tack that in place and then get some more of this thick uh, wire and lead over these tracks, get it all soldered up. Right, also gonna need this fuse holder for the uh, 12 volt power supply. And I've just left a little gap there. So I should still be able to get the fuse holder in and soldered yep that looks okay right here are my high current tracks i've soldered 
uh, the thick tin copper wire onto these uh, traces so that uh, uh, this is only taking six amps at mains voltage uh, so it's not a huge amount of current but I thought I'd just toughen those up right a final test before I fit the 12 volt power supply just to make sure it's still behaving itself because of course I shouldn't uh, put 12 volts onto here when this power supply is in place that's just a bit naughty Right, let's put resistor on across here and uh, that looks good so I think it's time to put that power supply in. And uh, there it is, all soldered up, ready to go in the box, the EVSE that I bought to replace the circuit board that was in there. Let's do it. So here we are, let's lift this one out. Try to leave that in position. Put that over there. Here's my replacement board. In it goes. Will it fit? Um, it's rocking on something. Probably some of these longer pins. So I might have to snip them down a bit. Right, mounting screws for the board. Put that into the box and then I'm going to have to attach the mains to the input socket. Hmm, scary. Right, live to the top one, like so. Protective earth to the middle one, which is different to the original layout. But it just worked better with protective earth in the middle for me and neutral to the bottom one that's quite close to that zero volt pin but not close enough that i'm worried ah something i've forgotten is the fuse of course i think you can use that slot oh yes you can to lift the lid that's good let's find i think something like i don't know 500 milliamps or something should work in there uh, I've actually found some 250 milliamp uh, quick acting, so that should be fine, shouldn't it? I mean, this thing's going to take precious little current from the mains, I'd have thought. Let's use one of those. Oh, yeah, the wire in here is extraordinarily thin. Yeah, that's very thin, but uh, that will give me the best safety, so I'll put that one in. And then to make sure my fingers are nowhere near the mains when I try the little resistor across the terminals <coughs> yes well when I can get that in there right to test this I'm going to use the most benign mains I've got which is this little 200 watt pure sine wave inverter on this power bank so I'll plug that into the commando via an adapter right switch on will it go bang let's power it up Well, that's the mains on it. Of course, there's nothing to see um, until I put the resistor across these two wires. Not anywhere near the mains, am I? So let's do that. And that turns the mains on. And we should also be getting the waveform uh, here on the CP line. So we can check that with the scope. And so with the, the waveform, there's the scope on there. Let's put the resistor on and that drops down to uh, six volts, of course, because of the resistor, but it's the dropping down to six volts that's causing the relay circuit to pull in. So that all looks good. Right, I think that's about it for today. My workshop's in a total mess. I need to have a bit of a tidy up. But the next step is to connect this to my car. So uh, when we get a nice day with a bit of sunshine, I will do that and video it. Uh, but for today, cheerio.